I'm David Gross, back with you with another one of my tips and tricks for sublimation success. If you watched a lot of our videos and done sublimation, especially on, on fabric, shirts, and things like that, you know one of the challenges that we all have is the outline of where the transfer was. And the outline is caused by the edge of the paper causing a permanent press crease. And I'll show you what an example is in case you haven't seen one before. But it's very difficult to prevent. My videos, if you review them, I show you how to use, for instance, the vapor foam kit or a Teflon pillow underneath the shirt so that the edges of the paper float and the edges of the paper aren't pressed in. Well, somebody here, uh, Tim Lynn, I saw him pressing some shirts the other day and he had a new neato technique that I had never occurred to me. And so I want everyone to try this and see if it works better than the cumbersome putting the, the vapor foam kit underneath your shirt, getting everything aligned. I think this tip will, will be very useful. So I want to show you what the marks look like, then I'll show you my technique. Okay, here is the, you can see the rectangle of where the paper was. And it's been pressed into here, and it's made just an ever so subtle permanent press crease into this shirt. This crease will not wash out. My new technique is to put a decal edge on the paper, and we're going to rip each edge so that we have a soft edge that doesn't bite into the shirt. And it's very simple. So we're going to just softly tear this thing. Now I've got an excuse for my tearing ability because I'm left-handed. And um, so left-handers struggle with a little bit of everything, at least I do. And so we're just making that soft edge right there. And um, I did, did go out and buy a um, decal ruler, by the way. And the um, decal ruler does a better job than, than doing nothing, but it still leaves a little bit of a mechanical edge. So ultimately, tearing it like this is the best. Now obviously you have to plan your design to give you some margin to tear. So if your graphics go really, really close to the edge, you just have to be real careful with the tearing. And so again, the, the principle of the technique is to give the shirt a very soft edge here so that the edge cannot bite into the shirt. Now we're going to do this transfer twice, once like this, once without, to just see the difference between the two. And again, using this technique, we don't have to be so critical about pressure. We can use um, light, lighter pressure, but we don't have to go real light like we would if we were using the vapor foam kit. So we're going to dress the press here. Now I'm going to cut out a lot of little steps here just to um, expedite things. I normally would lint roll the shirt and so forth, but we're going to just jump in here and do our press. We're going to press at 400 degrees, 45 seconds, um, with what I would call one-handed pressure, one-handed pressure. Now we will pre-press the shirt just to get wrinkles out and things like that and to check our press pressure. So we're going to swing around here. And pressure seems pretty good. Yeah, I like that pressure. And now we're going to do our transfer. Generally, we would also pro-spray the transfer to keep it from moving when they open a press. I've gotten to where I can open things very soft, softly without causing the transfer to move, but I would always recommend a quick mist of pro-spray so that when you do open the press and air rushes in, the transfer doesn't flap. If the transfer flaps, it's going to move, it's going to settle in a new spot, it's going to cause a little bit of a shadow print. Okay, we're done here. We're going to open things up very carefully, pull off our transfer. Things look really good. Awesome, 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 looks good. Uh, very difficult to detect an edge, very difficult. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to press it a second time 
with a standard transfer and we're going to compare it and see how we did. Also, um, if I was doing this for real, I would recommend that you uh, put a piece of paper um, in between the layers of the shirt to keep bleed through coming through here. So always a good shot. All right, we're going to put our transfer on here and put our cover sheet. I think I'm going to use a new cover sheet. By the way, this paper that I'm using, um, you can buy it. It's very inexpensive paper. You can buy it at Sam's Club and Office Supply Place. I call it uncoated white butcher paper. Uh, it's just inexpensive paper. It does a great job. All right. Normally, what we would have to do if we were doing it the old way is we'd have to get the vapor foam kit pad, put it underneath it, We'd have to put a piece of paper on top, get everything, you know, set up. And we always would want the transfer to be slightly larger than the vapor, but the actual artwork to be slightly smaller than the, the vapor foam kit. And that's, that's just difficult to do. It takes a lot of time, and time is money. And we also are looking for very good results. And so one of our jobs here is every day is a new day. We want to figure out how we can do things better today than we did yesterday. The Japanese, interestingly enough, had this concept years ago called Kaizen. And that's exactly what it means. It means do things better. Do things just a little bit better every day than you did yesterday. And all those improvements add up to be big improvements over time. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take it over to the table and then we'll do a close-up so you can see the results. Okay, I know it's difficult on the camera to see these things, but you can see the crease mark right here. And, um, you know, a client would definitely see it. Um, I see it. You would see it. And so it's just, it's not what we want to see, uh, and we don't expect a, a professional should be do better than this. We're going to flip it over, and uh, if you look here, um, you're not going to be seeing any crest crease at all along here. There's nothing there. I love your feedback on this new technique. I, I, I'm sure maybe it needs to be tuned a little bit more. Maybe there's something I haven't thought about, um, but uh, I'm using it. It's working for me. I'd love to hear back from you. Please let me know what you think at dgross.condi.com. Thank you for watching our videos. Till next time. Thank you.